For problem number seven, we're given that a force of 10 pounds is required to hold a spring stretched four inches beyond its natural length. Um, so the way that a spring works is it has its natural resting length. And if you stretch it out, it does require work to stretch it out. So remember that work is force applied through a distance. And when you stretch it out, it requires force to keep that weight. Because if you don't apply any force, it's just going to bounce back to its original length. So the force um, in a spring is given by uh, Hooke's law, which the force is equal to k times x, where k is some constant that varies for every spring, and x is just the distance stretched. Now, we're going to use this equation here, but we have to be careful because we're given 10 pounds and 4 inches, and the units of force in imperial is going to be um, pounds and feet, so we have to convert inches to feet. So um, 4 inches is... A, f a foot is um, 12 inches, so 4 inch is just 4 divided by 12, which is one third of a foot. So we just have to keep that conversion in mind. So we're given that a force of 10 uh, pounds is required to hold the spring. Um, so K, we don't know what K is, but we do know what X is, and that is one third, right? Maybe I'm going to put units here, so 10 pounds. And so now we just need to find K for this. So K, if we divide it out, K is going to be 10 pounds divided by uh, one third foot. And thus K is going to be equal to 10 divided by one third is 30 um, pound per feet. So that is the constant for this spring here. So we use the force equation to find out the constant. And now what we're trying to do here is calculate the work done in stretching it from its natural length to six inches beyond its natural length. So remember that work is force times distance, right? We're measuring how much force you have to apply and over a distance. However, this force is not constant. This force is variable. And the reason that it's variable is because it's an equation where the input is x and x is changing. x is the distance, right? So because this is a variable force, to sum it up, we have to sum it up using the integral. So we can think of, um, of the force being applied in this direction, where this is the x direction, and we're using the integral to sum up the work. So work is going to be the sum of our force, so times the distance. And in this case, the distance, because we're using calculus, the in distance is going to be infinitely small. So instead of just being d, it's going to be a dx. So work is the force times an infinitely small distance times dx. And what we have to remember here is that the force itself is an equation in terms of x. So given that the force is k times x, we can now replace this with, with um, k times x dx. But then we do have k, which is 30, right? So we can rewrite this as 30, I'm going to put it outside, times the integral of just x dx. And all that's missing for us now is to put in the boundaries. So it goes from its natural length. So we're going to consider that zero is the starting point because it has been stretched zero at its natural length to six inches beyond its natural length. So now be careful once more because the units that we're working with, um, their feet, they're not inches because force is, is measured in, um, in pounds and, and feet. So six inches is just going to be half a foot because a foot is 12 inches. So that's going to be half a foot here. And so we're now ready to integrate. So when we integrate, we get 30 times. The integral of x is just x squared over 2 and evaluate it from 0 to 1 half. So let me zoom out, and that's going to be, I'm going to put the 2 outside, so 30 divided by 2, that's 15, times x squared, 1 half, um, minus 0 squared, so x uh, 1 half squared is going to be 1 fourth, and therefore the answer is going to be 15 over 4. But now um, we do have to put the units of work, so that's, because um, force is, Force is pounds, right? And distance is feet, so it's pounds times feet. And that is it for problem number seven.